You are listening to the Healthy Leader Podcast with Tracy Fisher, episode number 42. Welcome to the Healthy Leader Podcast, where it's all about optimizing your health, energy, and performance for your mind and your body. And now your host, Master Coach Tracy Fisher. All right. I just love you all. (laughs) This is going to be another exciting episode. I'm really pumped up about it. And before I dive in, I want to say again, I love you guys. (laughs) I have had quite a few emails and messages on social media about the last episode, and you all have been great, thoughtful, curious, and really into witnessing your minds. And some of you shared that you have named your negative commanders. I've heard of Nancy Nudges and Maura Medler, (laughs) which I thought was great. And I was especially moved by this one message that I got that said, and I'm reading here, I can't thank you enough for this episode. I've been thinking about leaving my job because it's just too much with the increase in work and the reduction in resources. It has all felt too overwhelming. And I had no idea how much my negative thoughts were affecting my work. And here's the good part, the people around me, my family, my team, and even my leadership. I still may leave, but I am going to keep the lights on in my command center. And this just makes my heart swell. I love this. So thank you for interacting and sharing with me. It really, really means a lot to me. So with that, welcome everyone to the second part of a two-part series on self-command. And if you haven't yet, I invite you to pause here and go back and listen to the first episode, which is right before this one right now, and then come back to this one. So I want to do a quick review of the first episode. I introduced this phrase, command and control, to help you remember the process for creating more self-command. And self-command is truly the cornerstone for self-leadership and leadership. It is your ability to control yourself, to control your thoughts, your emotions, and your actions. And I work with leaders in the areas of self-leadership and our work is centered around the ability to intentionally direct your thoughts, emotions, and actions towards a specific desired result, whatever that result is. It can be health related, professionally focused, or about relationships. And the process that I use with everyone always starts with the ability to command and control your mind. And we want both of those. And so the first episode was all about that command piece, about turning on the light inside of your head so that you could look and listen for two specific types of thought patterns. And one of them we call the positive commander. And those are the thoughts that get you to your goals. They move you in your right direction. And, and this is important, they are thoughts that you appreciate and that are supportive of you. The negative commander does the opposite. Those are the thoughts that don't serve you. And in fact, they sabotage you. So if you did spend time looking at your thoughts and you use the inside out tool that I gave you, you probably discovered a few things about what's going on in there. And one of the primary things that we discover is that there's a big judge in our brains. And we judge ourselves, we judge other people, we judge the events that are going on around us. And this negative judge is our master saboteur. It is our master negative commander. And we all have automatic and habitual mind patterns with experiences, assumptions, and beliefs, or what I call belies, that work against our best interests. And this is universal. And the question isn't whether or not you have them. It's how strong they are within you. And oftentimes we don't realize that one, they exist and two, that they're really strong. So you got a chance to listen in on your own thoughts and commanders and stories that that commander is telling. And now I want to share a story with you too. And you may have already heard this. It's a Chinese parable about a son and his horse. And there's a line in it that I want you to focus in on and memorize. And here it is. Maybe so, maybe not. We'll see. And I'm going to read this parable to you. I'll also link to the parable in the show notes in case you want to read it again. So here it is. So there was a farmer and his son, and they had a beloved stallion who helped their family earn a living. 
And then one day the horse ran away and the neighbors exclaimed, your horse ran away, what terrible luck. And the farmer replied, maybe so, maybe not, we'll see. And then a few days later, the horse returns home, leading a few wild mares back to the farm as well. And so now the neighbors are like, your horse has returned and brought several horses with him. What great luck. And then the farmer replies, maybe so, maybe not, we'll see. And then later that week, the farmer's son was trying to break in one of the mares and she threw him to the ground and she broke his leg. And now the villagers cried, oh my goodness, your son broke his leg. What terrible luck. And then the farmer replied, say it with me, maybe so, maybe not, we'll see. And then a few weeks later, soldiers from the National Army march through town and they're recruiting all of the able-bodied boys for the army. And of course, they don't take the farmer's son because he's still recovering from his injury. And of course, all the friends are like, oh my gosh, your boy has been spared. What great, tremendous luck. To which the farmer replied, maybe so, maybe not, we'll see. And so the moral of this story is, of course, that no event in and of itself can truly be judged as good or bad, as lucky or unlucky or fortunate or unfortunate, but really only time will tell. And I love this story and share it with you here for a couple of reasons, because, of course, I love that phrase, maybe so, maybe not, we'll see. And this clearly shows how the negative commander can really throw us into the wrong conclusion and how if we are able to tap into the positive commander, it opens us up for other possibilities. And in addition to that, it helps us to remain calm and poised. Now, this is huge, being able to differentiate given the circumstances between the negative and the positive commander, because you may have also noticed that often you believe the negative commander, even when it doesn't serve you, even when it's causing anxiety or causing you to do things that you don't want to do. This is at the crux of why we often do not change, even though we want to. Our old beliefs the negative commanders have such an immense hold on us. So I want you to know that and keep that in mind. If you have been surprised by your ability to see the negative thoughts and still not change your behavior or not tear yourself away from them, know that you are absolutely not alone. And I want you to listen up because that's what this episode is all about. It's about gaining control over those commanders. So to wrap up the command piece, the other two things that I hope that you also noticed is your positive commander, that deeper and wiser part of you that says, okay, I'm going to wait and see what happens, or I'm going to strategize around this. I'm not going to get sucked in. And then I hope that you also made the connection between how you feel and what you do when you listen to your negative commander versus when you listen to your positive commander. And the cool part about all of this is that just noticing your thoughts and being willing, I want to like double red underline and bold that, being willing to look in there is often enough to begin shifting the way that you perceive certain things, which is why I dedicated an entire episode to this process. You all know the saying, we can't change what we can't see. That's what this is all about. And there's a lot more to the command piece. So I definitely invite you to go back and listen to that previous episode and spend at least a few days witnessing what's going on in your command center. I cannot emphasize how valuable this is. You may think that you know what you're thinking, but I promise you, if you're not getting the results that you want or you're stuck in a relationship or a job or in certain results, then it is time for sure to turn the light on in there and take a peek. All right, so that's the command piece of the command and control, understanding the positive and negative thought patterns and the impact that you have on you and then your emotions and your results. Okay, so this episode is about the control part of command and control and how you can begin to use the understanding of your thoughts to control your actions. But here's the thing. I'm not talking about your physical actions. I'm talking about the action that occurs between your two ears, the action of your mind. And this is a really important distinction. 
often people get the strategy for correcting their actions wrong because they are focused on the wrong thing. They're focused on trying to control physical actions. They focus on the diet, the exercise, getting up early, turning off the TV or pushing away from the desk or social media or whatever it is. And of course we need those actions. They are good. They are great. And for sure, we talk about plans and lagging indicators that are in alignment with who you want to be and what you want to achieve. And if we are only focusing on those physical actions, I would be doing you a disservice because after a while it gets tiring or the results don't come fast enough or the situation changes or the environment changes or one day you just had enough and it all goes to heck until you begin again, focusing in on your actions. And we get stuck in the cycle of focusing in on just the physical action that we want to create the results that we want. So the first thing to truly understand in the control piece is that we first and foremost are talking about controlling the actions of your mind and controlling your mind is work. It takes focus and conscious awareness and energy. And in, as I said in the last podcast, a serious willingness to do it. If you've ever tried meditation and you've been like, okay, this is way too hard. It is driving me crazy. That's the kind of hard I'm talking about. This is about you being with you in that command center and noticing the commanders and purposefully engaging in certain practices and techniques to train your mind, especially when you don't want to. The capability of managing your mind to maximizing your brain and controlling your command center is key. It is the secret weapon. It is key to the seven habits of highly effective leaders. It's key to the three strategies to a cohesive team, to the four steps to a fulfilled relationship, fill in whatever process you'd like. And it will always, always, always include self-command and learning how to control those commanders. Once you have control over them, then the physical action piece takes care of itself. It takes a lot of practice to reassert control over the commanders in your head. And so what I'm going to do today is to share with you three key strategies to begin practicing control in your mind first. And this is a high level perspective with some specific techniques that you can use in each one. There's much more to it if you're in the inner circle, but I want to give you at least these three strategies. And the general name of the tool that I want to give here for these strategies is inside out. In the last episode, we went outside in where you looked at your physical actions and then you went inside to see what was going on inside of your body and your mind. And now we're going to reverse that. This time we're going inside out. So the first two strategies happen inside your body. And then the third is something that you can do with your physical actions, specifically with your body. So I mentioned in the last episode that there is a direct link between the different parts of your brains and which commander is in control. The negative commander is fueled by the part of your brain that's focused on survival. And then the positive commander is fueled by a different region called your prefrontal cortex. And so what we are essentially doing here is we are integrating exercises and strategies to create more neural connections for the positive commander and to weaken the other connections. So the first strategy is to demote the negative commander. And the primary exercise to do this, you've kind of already done, is to shine a light on the negative commander and basically blow its cover. And the trick is to witness and label the commander. You simply are like, aha, there you are. I see you and I hear you telling me you think that because the horse ran away that we're destined to failure or that because you didn't get the promotion, it means you have no idea what you're doing or that because the scale didn't drop, it means you're never going to lose the weight. And all we're doing here is exposing the lie or what I call the B lie and being able to actually figure out what those lies are is a really big deal. The one example that comes out very often with high achieving executives that I work with is Okay, those negative thoughts, Tracy, they motivate me. They are what get me off the couch and working really hard. And they're afraid that if they don't give up those negative thoughts, then they'll be lazy or unambitious or complacent. That could not be further from the truth because 
really those negative thoughts keep you up late at night. They create anxiety. They have you thinking in patterns about how not to screw up and they sap so much energy and it takes a huge emotional toll and it leads to burnout. So instead of doing that, when we expose the negative commander and take what it is saying with a grain of salt or, or dismiss it outright and say your services are no longer needed, what we are doing is conserving that energy. And as soon as we recognize and label those thoughts, then we can implement the second strategy, which is to promote your positive commander. And what I mean by that is we actively look to the other thought system in our brain. I'm actually taking my body and pivoting and looking <laughs> to the right and give our attention to the positive commander. And there are a lot of different ways to do that. And I'm just going to give you one of them here. And what you can do when you turn to the positive commander is you ask, what is the opportunity here? Now, you are still just inside your mind thinking. You're thinking this through. You're demoting the negative commander and promoting the positive commander. And I want you to think about it exactly like this. And the reason is because it gives you a different way to think about your thinking. It gives you a scenario. And when you're able to turn to your positive commander and ask it a very specific question, you're now engaging with your prefrontal cortex. And I want you to turn to the commander as if it is the best commander in the world. They know exactly what to do in this precise situation, and they have the solution. They never say, I don't know, or I'm not sure. They always, always, always have an answer. So when you turn in your mind to this positive commander that you've just promoted and ask a question, it has your answer. So for example, I was just working with someone who is completely overwhelmed by her new leadership position and what her higher ups are asking her and her team to do in a limited amount of time. And there was this one specific instance that she was referring to. And I asked her, what she thought the opportunity might be. I am asking for her to think with her internal positive commander. And at first she was like, okay, Tracy, there is no opportunity here. This is ridiculous. We don't have the resources. We don't have the commodity. There's absolutely no way that we can make this happen. And so I asked her again in a slightly different way. And after she thought about it for a little bit, she came up with not just one, but several ways that she could turn this initial chaos into an opportunity. And one of them was that she could actually use this as a way to improve her own personal communication and trust with both her leaders and those that she leads by being more candid and open in all of her meetings. She realized that often she would sugarcoat things on both sides of her leadership. And this was her opportunity to step in and be confident and truthful and give the full picture. That is an amazing opportunity. And then there were also some other logistical gains and opportunities and so on. Turning to that positive commander can be really difficult. We want to blame, complain, and defend our positions and hold on tightly, so tightly to what we think is right or fair. And often we do that in the name of our values. And often we do it in a way that is really sabotaging our best selves and how we can show up in this particular situation. We lose sight of the bigger picture, the holistic picture, and the ability for us to align our values in a different way while also not losing our own sense of well-being. And again, this takes practice. And what you are doing here when you utilize your brain in this way is you are shifting into creativity, into strategic thinking, into innovation. And those are powerful, powerful leadership skills. So that's the second step, to look for the opportunity and to ask your positive commander to step forward. Okay, and then finally, I want to give you the outside tool. We've been on the inside and now we're going outside to help you practice and strengthen your ability to shift 
from the negative commander to the positive commander and to help you learn how to control that mental shift. And this third strategy is, is about going outside, but not too far outside of your mind. It's going outside to your body and using your physical body and your senses and small movements to strengthen your mental muscles to make that shift. And so for this, what we are doing is connecting our bodies with our minds. We are using a physical action that lasts 10 seconds up to 90 seconds. And the action is small. It might even be imperceptible to other people. So you can use it anytime. It could be deep breathing. It could be wiggling your toes. It could be focusing your vision on something and noticing the colors of something. It could be somebody's eyes. It could be the slides in front of you. It could be using touch your fingers on the keyboard or on your phone or on your pen or just even rubbing your fingers together. And what you do for just a few seconds is you really focus in on that physical sensation, whatever you've chosen to use. And I want you to think of these tiny movements as reps that you would do in the gym, like repetition. So how many bicep curls are you doing? And you want to stay with the reps for 10 to 90 seconds. And what you're doing here is shifting as much of your attention as you can to your body and your five senses. And the reason that we do this is because when you are focused in on your mind and your body like this, you are automatically activating the same part of your brain that's in charge of a positive commander. When you command yourself to stop being lost in thought or to stop doing whatever it is that you're doing and instead become aware of your physical sensations and you do it, you are activating that middle prefrontal cortex and you are practicing using command and control. You are thinking about it in your mind. You're actively saying, okay, this is when I'm going to use that strategy. And then when you physically do it, you are now in control. And there are a lot of studies that show how this type of interruption, this type of exercise when done consistently, permanently rewires your brain, thus increasing the power and the promotion of the positive commander and letting the negative commander stay down below. And the more you do these physical outside repetitions, the easier it will be for you to shift command and control of your mind. Now, I know this sounds too simple to be true. I also know that often people will consume this information and not practice it. I implore you to use this practice and begin playing with it. My recommendation is that you choose right now a time. It could be a time on the clock or it could be a, every time you do something like go to the bathroom or when you start a Zoom call or when you end a Zoom call, if you have them back to back or every time that you look at your phone or when you get in your car or when you get up out of your chair to go talk to somebody, that each time you do that, you spend 10 seconds shutting off your brain and purposely dropping into your body and experiencing the sensations of sight, sound, taste, hearing, or touch. Choose something. Choose some physical aspect of what you are doing. As a matter of fact, you could even do it right now. If you are sitting down while you are listening to this, take a moment to feel the weight of your body in your chair. I'm going to give you 10 seconds to do that. Just notice what the weight feels like. And if you're not sitting in a chair, if you're walking or out and about, pick something else. It could be the breeze up against your face. It could be your feet striking the ground. It could be your breathing. I'm going to give you 10 seconds to be present to that. That's all it takes. You can do this any 
time. You can do this even in the shower. You can stop your mind chatter for just a minute and focus on the physical sensation of the water hitting your skin or notice the temperature of it or what it feels like, you know, to rub the shampoo into your hair and just really be physically present to what the physical sensation is. There are unlimited opportunities to basically come off of autopilot and come to the present and notice these physical sensations. And again, I want to emphasize that when you do this, you are shifting your mind. You are practicing stopping that autopilot and that will only serve you when you go to shift from the negative commander to the positive commander. So I want to give you a really quick example of how this might work for you. You can use that third strategy of being outside and, and creating that mind-body connection anytime to strengthen those muscles in your brain. But I want to give you an example of how you might be able to use these all together. So let's say that you've just heard that you've lost your biggest client. And this is a big deal. We're talking lots of revenue. There are people around you who are shaking their head. They cannot believe it. We don't know what happened. Their emails flying back and forth. And you start thinking maybe other clients are going to hear about this and then they're going to start dropping. And then you might not make the numbers for this year. And you've already got that other thing that happened to you personally. And you can feel your heart racing. Your mind is spinning just a little bit. You've got butterflies in your stomach. And then you realize, oh, here it is. Those thoughts right there, those thoughts are my negative commander talking to me. They're not serving me. They're keeping me spinning around they're making me nervous and they're not helpful. And this is where you're using that first strategy where you're observing and labeling the negative commander. You're like, aha, that's the judge taking me down the path of negativity. And this is exactly where you can use the phrase from the Chinese parable. All right, maybe so, but maybe not. We'll see. And this is where you can use a third strategy and drop into your body, feel your breath, Gently rub your fingers together. Notice how it feels to be inside of your body instead of spinning in your brain. And then you can institute the next strategy and turn to your positive commander, the wise part of you who knows exactly what to do and ask, what's the opportunity here? And that side of your brain says, the opportunity here is to learn how to get a client back in less than six hours. Or the opportunity here is to create a SOP or standard operating procedure to make sure this doesn't happen again. Or the opportunity here is now we're really motivated to get this other client. Who knows what the opportunity is? You know. And that's exactly how it works. Now, is that how it always works every time? Absolutely not. And that's why this is a practice. Your panicked brain is going to be like, oh, no, 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 this is different. This particular situation requires panic. It requires for everybody to be in high alert and for everybody to get their game faces on. I don't care if it's creating anxiety or not. This situation is different and then you're off. Now, later, you might recognize that you were off and you may be able to go back and say, okay, what was the opportunity there? And how could I have taken 10 seconds to calm myself down before I shot off that email? How could I have commanded myself differently? And every time you do that, it is success because that means that you are practicing the art of self-command and your ability to control the commanders of your mind in a progressive and believable way that works for you is the work that we're doing here. It doesn't matter if you're looking for more confidence as a leader, if you're managing physical urges to drink or to eat or to shop, or if you are trying to cultivate better habits around procrastination or conflict avoidance. Self-command begins in the controlling of the commanders in your mind. And here's the crazy thing that happens when you start to increase your self-command. <laughs> you look back on when you were practicing this and you have this really weird thought. And that thought is, mm, it really wasn't that hard. <laughs> Which is kind of weird because it sure as heck can seem hard, especially if your negative commander is in control. But once you make that mental switch, that's it. That is the hard part. Then the physical action flows from that. Once you have mentally decided who is in command, you've asserted control over your own mind. It's just a simple decision. 
And now it doesn't seem that hard. But when you're in it, it can feel really hard. And that's why this simple process does not mean easy. So if you are having trouble managing your mind, I implore you to keep at it. Remember that each day, each hour, each moment is another opportunity to practice these strategies of command and control. It's not going away. Your brain is not going away. These concepts are not going away. And someone is at the controls in there. It might as well be you. So don't forget that I believe in you. And I think that you are great. And you right now absolutely have the capacity to be in command. All right. So go forth and create your great. Hey there, if you are ready to take your well-beingness to the next level, come visit thewellness.coach where I've got lots of free resources. And make sure that you type in thewellness.coach, not .com, and I will see you there.